Hi there, I'm Nancy Stewart. I'm a facilitator in human resources at Western University. And we're here today to talk about managing priorities. In this short session today, we're gonna to cover two things, understanding priorities a little bit better and then making progress on them. So Stephen Covey tells a really great story about the priorities that we need to pay attention to. So he starts with this really great visual. It's just an empty glass jar. So what he does is he fills the jar up with these big rocks, adds them one at a time, fills it right up to the brim. And then he asks everybody, is this jar full? Everyone, of course, that's watching says, yes, it's full. And then he pulls out some more little rocks, and then he just starts dumping them into the jar and fitting them in, and asks everybody again, is this jar full? Well, people are starting to catch on. No, probably not. And then he reaches down and he grabs sand and he pours that into the jar. And then he grabs some water and he pours that into the jar, obviously making the point of, look at all of this stuff that could fit in here. So now I want you to reimagine this. What if he starts with the sand and the water and even some of the pebbles in there? Do you think that he can fit in the big rocks? Well, no. If you're shaking your head not so much, you're right. He can't fit them in at this particular point because it's already too full. So bringing this back to managing priorities, you're probably watching this video because you want to make time to be able to focus on the things that are really important to you, probably because you're so busy. So here's my question. What are your big rocks? Can you name them? Are they really clear to you as to what those big rocks are? I'm curious. Often our big rocks fall into seven different areas. And here's the secret to making progress on important priorities. They generally just don't, they don't happen naturally and they need our focus. So in other words, they need our intention and they need our attention. So I know you're busy and I know that you have a lot on the go, so I, I really get that. So what I wanna do is I wanna shift over to what it is that you have on the go right now. So I wanna work together with you on this and so for this next part, you're gonna need a pen and a piece of paper. So go get those right now, just give you a couple seconds and have those things in front of you. So in the next quiet 60 seconds, I want for you to write down everything that you have on your radar that you need to start or finish at work or at home. And I mean everything that you're carrying around on your mind of things that you need to do, 60 seconds, write them down. Okay, time's up. I bet you have a lot of stuff on there. So what I'd like for you to do is take a look at your list and identify what is one thing that you have on your list that you would say, if you could look back in one month and you would have made progress on that particular item, that you would feel so good, that this would have some really significant results for you if you were to make some progress on that particular priority. So take 10 seconds, review your list, and either star it if it's on there, or if you haven't thought about your list that way, add it to the list. You'll look back in a month and you'll think, wow, I'm so glad I did that. Okay, last question. I want for you to look at your list again, and I want for you to identify what is one thing that you have on that list 
that you're going to look back on a year from now and you're going to think, I'm so happy that I made progress on that. Again, if you don't have it on your list, I want for you to write it down. 10 seconds. Okay, so you've got your list. Good, let's work with it. The purpose of noting these examples down is that you have some of your own content to be able to work with in this next part. Um, what we're gonna talk about is a really great way to look at prioritizing what you have on the go. So let's look at two types of activities. The first are prevent pain activities. So let me give you an example of this one. Let's say that a colleague has contacted you for some information. You need to gather some documents, put it together, and you need to get it to the, into the mail. You need to send it to them. We'll think about that as a prevent pain activity. So what are the criteria of prevent pain activities? Well, firstly, they have a nearby deadline. So you really feel like you need to do this in a pretty short amount of time. Secondly, they carry consequences. So if I don't do it, something bad's gonna happen. So I'm gonna have that person calling me, asking me where's that information that you promised me and, uh, and I don't wanna deal with that. Thirdly, it will likely be forgotten tomorrow. So once I get that package together, I put everything in, I send it off, it's in the mail. If someone asks me tomorrow, what did you do yesterday? I'm not even gonna think about that particular task. It's completely forgotten. And lastly, it can be delegated. So I've got some of the information. If I really get technical about it, maybe I could ask one of my colleagues if they'd be able to put that together and, and send that for me on my behalf. So that would be an example of a prevent pain activity. Although if you think about your day, and if you are 100% full of prevent pain activities like that, man, you're gonna get tired. The second type of activities that we have are called gain activities. So thinking about an example about this, let's say that there is a certificate program that you really wanna be a part of, and you really think that that would be helpful to you in your work if you could attend these classes and get this certificate. So let's think about that example for a gain activity. So firstly, gain activities, they're not urgent in that mm, you don't usually have to do it today. And actually, they might not even really have to be done at all. You could pretty much get through your life and not do it. Thirdly, they produce significant results. So if you do actually uh, attend your classes, you're able to get this certificate, you're gonna have some really positive results that come out of this. And lastly, they can't be delegated because you yourself have to go through the experience. So here is the harsh truth. What this tells us in looking at these two types of activities is that we need to figure out a way to reprioritize. Because at any time when a prevent pain activity is put up against a gain activity, the prevent pain activity will always win every single time. The reason for that is because generally we don't have our gain activities in our calendars. We don't have time protected for these things. We may not have even articulated that we need to do these things. So that's what really what we're dealing with when we're talking about having to reprioritize what we have on the go. So thinking back to the example we talked about earlier, our gain activities, those are our big rocks. Those are the things that have to be in our jar first. They need to be protected. All of our prevent pain activities, all of the things that you've listed of what you have on your mind, of things that you have on the go right now, all of those things are the sand and the water and maybe even a few little pebbles. But those are the things that we need to add in after we have the big rocks in the jar just to fill in the space. So you may be thinking, then how do I do this? How do I make room for the important priorities that I have? So that's what I want for us to walk through together next. Okay, so what I'd like to ask for you to do is zero in on one of your gain tasks, on one of the important priorities that you need to move forward.
I'm going to choose an example. I have a report that I need to write and it's going to involve quite a bit of time. It's going to involve a number of different steps that I'm going to need to put together and I'm going to use that as my example of an important gain activity that I need to move forward for myself. So in this report that I have to write right now, I know that I have to do it. It's kind of in the back of my mind and if I'm really honest with you, it's kind of like this dark cloud that's looming over me. I haven't really thought about all the work that needs to go into it, but I know that it does need to get done and that's going to produce some significant results for me. So I want for you to make sure that whatever you've chosen, your gain activity, it's going to make you feel really good when you've got it done. So the next thing I want to ask for you to do is think about that priority and identify what is the very next possible physical action that you could take in order to move that priority forward. And I'm talking little, just the next possible physical action. Next thing I want to ask you, that first step that you identified, how long is that going to take you? 20 minutes? 45? Maybe an hour? So here's the next question. When can I do that? When do I have 20 minutes? I just need to schedule it. I need to look at my calendar, find where I have 20 minutes available, put it in, and protect the time. So I'll ask you, when do you have time to be able to schedule your next physical action that you can take to move that priority forward. All right, so here's the question. We took about three minutes taking that important priority that you had, breaking it down, figuring out the next step, scheduling when that's going to happen. So what changed? Well, I think that it's that you took something that was kind of big and scary and you moved it into something a little bit more manageable that you can actually move forward. So why is it that we don't make progress on these important priorities at times? Well, there's a few reasons. First of all, if it's on my mind, then my mind isn't clear. So I need to collect tasks and ideas externally. So likely, why all this stuff is rolling around in your head is because you haven't organized it yet. Um, you may have noted that you have this particular project that you have on your mind, but you haven't taken the time to be able to write it down in a place that you're going to revisit. Secondly, I need to clarify exactly what my commitment is to decide what to do and to make progress. So likely when you haven't conceived of that very next step that you need to take, it just seems too big. It just seems like something I don't even have the energy to think about getting started right now. And thirdly, once I've decided on that very next action, I need to keep reminders of them in an organized system that I review regularly. So likely, you haven't put those reminders in a place that is going to trigger you to make a start at that. So I'm thinking that in the past, you likely wouldn't have made an appointment in your calendar to take an action on that very next step. So those are the things that have changed just in these few minutes of thinking about that gain activity a little bit differently. All right, let's do a little progress check. So now, you're clear on what it is that you need to do. You know the very next step that you need to take to make some progress on this particular priority and you've scheduled it. You've protected time in your calendar to be able to move this forward. Now, it's over to you. You just need to do it. And think about how great you're going to feel when you have this on the go and you can legitimately say, yeah, I'm making progress on that. That's going to feel great. So I hope you've enjoyed today's session. Thank you very much and I wish you all the best of luck in achieving your important priorities.